Hey, Michael with X-Force PC. Been doing a little bit of performance testing on the two different ways to support triple display on X-Plane. Of course, a lot of people like to do three displays because you can get a wider field of view and possibly even, you know, a wraparound type of view. Now, uh, again, there are two ways to do it. The first way to do um, triple display in X-Plane is to use NVIDIA Surround. So what NVIDIA Surround does is it stitches together the three monitors. Now obviously, by the way, you would not arrange your monitors this way. You'd have these side monitors cocked in, uh, but I've got them flat here so you can sort of see, you know, what is going on. Now uh, again, what NVIDIA Surround does is it stitches the three monitors together and makes it look like one really wide monitor to the computer. So once you go into NVIDIA Surround and you enable it and you arrange your displays, the computer thinks we're running one monitor. X-Plane thinks we're running one monitor. It's just really wide. In fact, it's 5760 by 1080 if you're using three 1080p displays. This will actually give you really good performance. Um, you don't get the near, near the performance hit you get when you run them as individual windows of X-Plane. But the disadvantage you get is you get some distortion out on the far edge of the screen. So the further out you go, you'll start to see things sort of stretch. And you might notice here, this object here is a little bit stretched. And the further out you go towards the edge of the monitor, the more that stretching you're going to notice. It's really not that bad though. Really not that bad. So this is um, NVIDIA Surround. Next we'll talk about how, and get, get a good shot of this in your mind. Next I'm going to show you running X-Plane as individual windows of X-Plane. Okay, we're back. Now we have X-Plane set up with three individual windows of X-Plane. And this isn't necessarily a tutorial on how to do that. This is more talking about performance. As you'll see here, we don't have this stretched area here. Remember, this was real stretched out looking. And so we're actually getting a full 180 degrees. You could take these monitors, turn them in at a 90 degree angle or, or a sharp angle. And you could actually look out to your right and you can see right underneath the wing. Um, so you might say, well, why wouldn't you always do it this way? This, this looks so much nicer. Well, it's a question of frame rate. So um, right now we're getting 37 frames per second. And typically when you're doing surround, you get anywhere from 25 to 50% higher frame rate. So if you're on a machine that's a little challenged for frame rate or you set it up this way and you find that your frame rate isn't acceptable, a move to surround could be the way to go. Now I want to take a little bit deeper dive into performance and talk about CPU and processor utilization when doing both technologies. Okay, so now we come to the interesting results. I want to first talk about when we did three individual windows of X-Plane, not NVIDIA Surround. So again, we set up the desktop with three individual windows. We went into X-Plane and uh, told X-Plane, this is the left one, this is the right one, this is the middle one. And this is the, the setup that doesn't give you distortion, but gives you lower frame rate. What I found is, um, now the processor I was using is an i5-9600K, runs at 4.8 gigahertz. Uh, about the fastest you can get a chip going these days is 5 gigahertz, but I was clocking it at 4.8. So just about as fast of a chip as you can get. I wanted to take that out of the equation if I could. And then I ran the test with the 2080, the 2070, and the 2060. So that's out of NVIDIA's new RTX line. Again, the, 20, the 2080, 2070, and 2060. And here's the interesting thing. The frame rate I got on all three was 37 frames per second. So if you're running three individual windows of X-Plane and a high-end you know, processor clock close to 5 gigahertz, you might say, well, I want more than, you know, let's say you're running a 2060 and you say, you know what? I want more frame rates. I'm going to go out and I'm going to buy a 2080. And a 2080 is a significantly faster graphics card. You pop it in, boom, exact same frame rate. Now, how frustrated would you be with that? I mean, I know I would be. 
So um, it's quite interesting. And when I looked at CPU utilization, you know, we, when I did all three tests, it was 44%. Now this is a six core processor, and obviously games and simulators aren't very good at utilizing all of the processing power, uh, all six of those cores. So, um, but it was interesting that the CPU load was 44% across the board. Now the GPU load did vary depending on which card I had in, but ne neither, none of these cards got pegged out at 100%. And that's why you saw exactly the same frame rate, 37, on all three cards. So the 2060 got close. It was 98% utilized, but still managed to give us the same 37 frames per second that the 2070 gave us. And it was, uh, it was utilized at 88%, so 98, 88, and then we're down to 68 for the 2080. So um, G CPU did not change, 44% across the board. The only thing that changed was the, the graphics uh, utilization went up. But again, not to the point where the graphics card became the bottleneck. So I thought that was uh, very interesting. Uh, what, that's, what does it tell me? What does this tell me? Um, it tells me that it's not an issue of hardware, it's an issue of optimization in the software, in my opinion. When you are utilizing the CPU at only 44%, and you can vary the graphics card dramatically and get no difference in performance, that tells me that there's probably some work to do in optimizations. Will Vulkan fix that? this? I don't know. Um, I'm not sure that it will because Vulkan has to do with graphics. And as we've shown, this isn't a graphics problem. It, it is apparently a CPU problem. So let's take a look at the NVIDIA surround results because those are a little bit different. Okay, so looking at NVIDIA surround, and just to review, NVIDIA surround is when you take the three monitors and you don't have them set up individually. You actually, using the NVIDIA control panel, and you stitch the monitors, all three of them together, so they look like one really wide monitor to the computer, to the operating system, and to X-Plane. So X-Plane thinks you're using this like 50 inch wide by, I don't know, 12 inch high monitor, and the resolution of this monitor is 5760 by 1080. And when you do that, it seems that the code does a much better job of leveraging the hardware and you actually get variance in the frame rate. So when we did this on the 2060, I got 42 frames per second and my CPU was utilized at 46%. And my GPU was actually pegged out, maxed out at 100%. And what's interesting is it's actually easier to do NVIDIA surround than it is to do three individual windows of X-Plane um, because it's the same number of pixels, but you're having to do almost sort of like three flight models when you're doing three individual windows of X-Plane. I know that's not the best way to describe it, but the work should be easier because it's just one monitor with the same number of pixels as opposed to three individual monitors with the same number of pixels. So 42 frames per second for the 2070, 49 frames per second for the 2080, and 57 frames per second for, I'm sorry, I think I saw this at 2070, and um, 57 for the 2080. So say that one more time. 42 for the 2060, 49 for the 2070, 57 for the 2080. So we saw the variance we would expect to see based on how much faster these cards are. And this tells me that when you're using NVIDIA surround, the bottleneck, so to speak, uh, is the graphics. And I have the graphics turned up pretty high. Um, now, CPU utilization, I mentioned earlier it was 46% on the 20, when we used the 2060, it went up to 49% on the 2070, and went up to 78% on the 2080. And that's because the 20, let's say, the, take the 2080, it can output a lot more pixels, so it's able to put that CPU to work shoveling those pixels at it. 
You might say, why would the CPU utilization go up when you put a faster graphics card in? Seems like it would have to work not as hard, but it actually has to work harder because it's trying to keep that graphics card busy. It's shoveling data at it faster than, let's say, the 2060. Now, GPU utilization was close to 100% on all three of these, but it was 100% for the 2060, 100% for the 2070, and it dropped down to 93% for the 2080. And so what that tells me is when we get to the 2080 and we're not maxing it out, we're starting to shift that bottleneck at that point back to the CPU. And if I did the 2080 Ti, which I didn't take the time to do, um, you'd probably see that utilization go down even further and CPU utilization come up even higher. So the bottom line is uh, right now in 11.31 X-Plane, um, if you're doing NVIDIA surround and you're not getting the desired frame rate, probably your bottleneck is your graphics card. If you're running three individual windows of X-Plane, not surround, and you want more frame rate, then you want more clock speed. Um, you might say, well, what about more cores and all that? Really, right now, X-Plane is very reactive to clock speed. As an experiment, I took this processor that was running 4.8 gigahertz, and I dialed it down to 3.5 gigahertz, and my frame rate went down accordingly. In other words, the percentage I dropped the uh, clock speed of the processor is exactly the percentage the frame rate dropped. So when you're running um, individual windows of X-Plane, it's all about clock speed. Hopefully that helps. It's the first time I've ever done this type of test, and um, I'm going to share this with the developers, and hopefully it helps them you know, moving forward to, to try to provide even better performance.